Okay, so here it is again. Like I told y'all, sitting with Silverbacks on this uh, po- podcast, my platform, we're going to be talking with uh, athletes, uh, mental therapists, doctors, lawyers, nurses, personal trainers, and we even going to get into bringing uh, kids on. I'm going to bring uh, young athletes on too to uh, let them get their kind of like a media training type feel. Um, so where they could sit down and get used to talking to the cameras and sitting down just having conversations. So today I got an athlete with me, good buddy. Uh, I'm gonna let him introduce himself to you. What's up, man? It's your boy Devin Bellamy. Y'all know me as a lot of a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Ice in the veins, Mr. Humble Yourself, whatever. Georgia Bulldog man, Rose Bowl champion. You know, UGA. UGA. SEC champion, uh, philanthropist, <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want to call it though, man. But yeah, man, it's been a, a long time. You know what I'm saying? It's my dog right it. here. I appreciate Had to come. Oh, for I sure. appreciate you. Uh, I don't do a lot of interviews, so this will probably be my one and only this year. Still with still with back. No Sitting with Silverbacks. You don't do a lot of interviews. No. You know what I mean? No. It, say, it takes a special call. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? It comes through for the OG, so, man. I appreciate you. But bro. I respect the podcast also, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, I, I respect the message we trying to get across. I don't ever want to be a part of nothing that's, uh, it's a lot of gimmicks out here now. Yeah. yeah a lot of gimmicky yeah. podcasts out here now. You know, what women Shepherd. need, what men need. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, 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 nah right, this right. is what you need for the soul. Thank you, bro. You know what I'm saying? It. For sure. Definitely got to have it. Uh, mental fitness, physical fitness, and the main thing, my, uh, the kids, the kids, my kids following and that that's what's growing me right now. For sure. My youth athletes. Um and starting with that part, I'm gonna talk about you. I like I know you got a lot going on. Uh I'm gonna talk about like your your younger athletic career. Like uh, where where you from? Uh, right. And where you play like rec ball and stuff. Right, like yeah, that. for sure, for sure. So I'm from Atlanta. I always grew up on the east side. Okay. Um, she meant Central Drive. I did not know you were from Atlanta. Yeah, I'm from Central Drive. So a lot of people that's watching this, if you're from Atlanta, if you're from Atlanta, you for sure know what Central Drive is. Uh, for sure, one of the toughest blocks in the city. Okay. Especially on the east side. Uh, funny story. Uh, my first time being in the studio with Miko. Uh, Gucci was in there. Okay. And we was having a conversation like, yo, I grew up listening to your music. It's crazy. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm Okay. I'm watching you right now. We're in the studio. And, That's uh, crazy. He was like, yeah, bro, where you from? I told him, Central Drive. He looked at me like, oh, well, you're certified. Well, I used to be on Central Drive all the time. Okay. For sure. Okay. So, yeah, but um, I started playing at uh, Century DeKalb. U.S. That's youth ball? Or? Youth ball. That's park ball. So, CDJ. CDJ. What age? Uh, Man, I started at uh, five. I started at five. So well, That was, wasn't tap, but that was flat. Oh, no. So, this is a crazy story about that. Um... Back in the day, it went by weight, not age. So I was always big for my size. I was going to ask you that too. You see what I'm saying? So, so um, my mom, we walked in to uh, the sign up shit late. Right. So they was already having practice, and me and my mom, she walked me on the field, and the, and the team was already in the middle. On the football field. On the football field, and she was like, "My son want to play football. Is this flag football?" So the coach said, "Ma'am." Uh, that registration was over. This tackle football. She said, "Thank you so much." And she, we turned around. We started walking towards the gate. And then the coach said, uh, "Never." Uh, the coach said, um, "But you know, he can play real football." Uh-huh. So that's when I decided to play. So we signed up, played tackle football. So I played up all my life. Because of my weight, we didn't go you. by age. I got you. So even though I was five and six, I had the weight of an eight-year-old. So I played up. So even when, like when I was playing, when I was ten, I wasn't playing ten and under. I was playing twelve and under. So, <clears throat> at what age did it become serious to you? Like, I like football for real. I think I see the success I see in it now. Cause I've been playing the same position my whole life. I've been a defensive end since I was five years old. Wow. So I knew, well, I didn't know, but my park ball coaches knew that he had the knack of getting to the quarterback. Cause I was doing that in park ball. 
I could set an edge uh -huh. and get sacks. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So, um, but it wasn't until, man, I think it was uh, in middle school, in eighth grade, man, we uh, we lost. I went to Shanley Middle. Okay. And uh, we lost to Avondale Middle in the playoffs. And uh, we were shaking the hands. And, and their coach said, good game, well, keep your head up. You keep coming off that edge like that, you're going to be playing on Sundays. Eighth grade. That was eighth grade. 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 And you turned up. Yeah, yeah. But I had a growth spurt, though. So I was like 5'10, 5'11, my seventh grade year. And then that summer going to eighth grade, I shot like 6'4, 215. Expect you to win. I was 6'4, 215, eighth grade. 6'4, 2. Yeah, yeah. For sure. That's a thoroughbred. We got a coach saying, that's a thoroughbred. All right. That's what they call them. Yeah. We used to call them, uh, we used to be like, well, that boy a freak. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that type, that boy was a freak. Mm -hmm. All right. So after, um, at that point, when you got to, what was the high school? What what clicked in? When did, what what was you doing to when the college just started coming in? Man. <laughs> like, man, I went to Shabby High School. Man, we weren't known for sports. We weren't known for football. Uh, actually, I'm going to tell you, this is crazy. You'll probably never hear about this in uh, in Georgia high school sports history. I was 6'4", 215 in eighth grade. Reed, y'all know Dad Reed, you know yeah, Reed? Yeah, He was 6'2", 205, playing quarterback, running back, and middle linebacker. This is no lie. We went to Shambly Middle. So at this time, Tucker High School popping, Stevenson popping, MLK popping. This true story. We in eighth grade, None of those schools believe that these freaks that's over here on the north side of the cab could compete. Nah, are gonna go to that high school. Wow. They all thought. So let me tell you about this, bro. We would literally get called to the office like we thought we was in trouble. Burp. Can Devin Bell and Desiree please come to the principal office? We're like, bro, we're dead now. Wow. We would walk in there. It would be Tucker High School on the phone. Uh. MLK on the phone, Stevenson on the phone, trying to get us to go to their high school. Oh. Like, we was getting recruited out of middle school, like, and I think the thing that, you know, I want to say hurt a little bit is we didn't know what we were because we are going to Shambly. Mm. It's not known for sports. I got you. But to everybody else at these schools like Tucker, Stevenson, MLK, where it's just a filter to these D1s, Teams, yeah, yeah. they like they got a six four, two hundred and fifteen pound eighth grade on there, over at Shambly Middle School playing wide right receiver, running back, and defensive end. They got a six two, two ten running back playing quarterback, defensive end, and middle linebacker. Wow, go get them right now. We didn't know that we were freaks. Yeah, that's that's and and you know what? A lot of high schools are doing that now. I'm saying yeah. a lot. They they it's recruiting. They're recruiting, they recruiting, they they finding these kids and they bringing them in, man. They get to them parents and they definitely make that call, man. Facts. They're going to make it happen. Facts. They Facts. want that kid, they're going to get them. So shout out to all the high schools that's doing all the scouts. Facts. But they want them. what's crazy is I would have went, but what kept me at Shelly is my mom was a teacher there. Okay. Okay, makes sense. Lord, it's I mean, that's my ride to school. Right. <laughs> and, 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 listen, what I'm telling you, though, what I just told you before, I'm from Central Drive. My home school with Towers. Mm. You got Atlanta audience. They know that around 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, Towers was like the halls that Morgan Freeman was walking. Right. And, oh, right. You're right. And, uh, and that, uh, that move. And lean on me. Lean on me. Yeah, yeah. Right. So my mom was like, you're not going there. You're going to Shelby High School. So when we got to high school, man, we was just, I didn't do no summer workouts because I was playing AAU basketball. Now I had grew into this height and I was a hooper now. So what was it, what was it that you think you was that, uh, when the, you were doing to get the college to start coming? What, what, at what point? What, 10th grade, 11th nah, grade? it was around, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't get my first offer to my 11th grade summer. Uh, that's, that, that's, it, that's, that's, that's fairly late, because the summer, it's a, it's a summer spring going to my senior year. Uh -huh. 
So I had been in that school for three years where we were losing school at Chamblee. Scouts weren't coming through. So when I started getting my first offer, you know, scouts would walk in and say, when did he transfer here? Mm -hmm. like, nah, this boy homegrown. This boy been going to school on this side of town since he was in elementary. Mm -hmm. Where y'all been? So I didn't get my first offer until the basketball coach, uh, he was a girls basketball coach. His name Coach Rice. He had been watching me since middle school and high school. He came to me and he said, you got too much talent. I'm not about to sit here and watch you go to a school like FIU. I'm finna make you a tape and I'm finna drive you everywhere. I want, I want my kids to know how important it is for to have tape coverage. I mean, any, any type of- Tape. Yeah. Tape, tape from my junior year and created a disc. This is what he showed though. It wasn't a crazy highlight tape. It's just that at that frame I had, remember like at 6'4", yeah. 215, I was playing in high school, I was playing safety, right receiver, tight end, defensive end. He showed them an athlete. He showed them every part of, I played the back end, the middle end, and the front seven. And he just, and right receiver, and tight end. He showed me split out, showed me attached. So they just saw an athlete. Right. And that right when the game was transitioning to the 3-4 game, where you want more of that athletic backer. So I went from having zero offers all, all my high school career to literally this summer. Going into my senior year, I had 32. And one summer, I had 32. Because sometimes parents, we be in certain, in certain places, parents just feel like their kid is just it. They're just, just it. They're going to find them. I'm like, man, you know how many more kids out here that that's just that good? It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. Right. It's a lot. And what you got now, you got the portal. Right. Oh, man. So a lot of high school kids are getting cut. It's like it ain't even half. It's like three-fourths of high school kids that's getting scholarships. Okay. So like I said, if your son out there sticking out like a sore thumb, you know, he get that buzz early. You see what I'm saying? He get them stars, which would that mean come with stars? Right. He just solidify them a little easier now. If I was growing up, if I had my same high school uh, recruitment in this day and age, yeah. I may not have had the offers I had because this is before the transfer portal. But now it's uh, at the three star man with the transfer portal. You ain't gonna have thirty two offers. Yeah. All right. So now, UGA, talk to me. How, who, what, what, how that come about? Talk <laughs> to me, man. What's happening? Man, so I was committed to Florida State first. I ain't know that. Oh yeah, I was a Seminole. I was a Seminole. Jimbo Fisher had me sold. Oh man. Jimbo Fisher had me sold. It's a funny story. Uh, uh <laughs> the guy that recruited me, Damian Craig. Okay. So <laughs> he said he took Jimbo my tape. He said Jimbo. At Rodney's time, this when Florida State was having a lot of trouble Go with on. the law. Yeah. Okay. He said, right, Jimbo, when I give you this tape, he one of the ones. He may get in trouble. <laughs> and then uh, Jimbo. Hey, that's that Gucci movie. Nah, look, look, look. <laughs> Jimbo say, Jimbo say, ah, oh, Craig, this is true story. This fresh out Damon Craig Mallet. He said, I don't want another one of them guys, man. We already have a trouble around, around here what it is. He said, I know Jimbo just put the tape in. <laughs> He put a tape measure on it. Okay, he got off. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Hey, 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 Joe. Like, okay, I'm cool. Gucci straight. Bring him on. Yeah, yeah. bring him on. Yeah, for sure, for bring sure, okay. for sure. So, uh, um, I was coming there for a long time, and they had a they had a coaching change at the last minute. Mm. And man, I was sitting in uh, Shelby High School and Todd Grant and walked in them doors. And after that, I took that visit to Georgia, it was a wrap. You just did it like that? It was a wrap. Uh, you know, I was the first person that ever put the show pads on. Man, come on, man. So, that's so, my favorite, that's my favorite. You know, favorite. So, you know, I always, you know, so I always look, throw that one on. So look, the, this is what I like about it. So I see a lot of the Georgia boys do it now where yeah. they run to the sideline and they stand on the uh, bench. Uh -huh and look towards the crowd, they got the shoulder pads on. Yeah. I was the first one to do that. I grew up watching wrestling. I loved wrestling so much. So when I got the sack fumble week three uh -huh. against Notre Dame, 
that was the first time the shoulder pads were introduced. Wow. Me, I'm a, I'm a kid that grew up watching wrestling. Yeah. Randy Orton, Rob yeah. Van Dam. When I got the sack fumble Notre Dame, I put the shoulder pads on, and I said, I feel like a wrestler. Let me stand up here and let me just embrace all this. And now I see guys doing that now. When they, the, what's the first thing they do? Got go it. run, put the shoulder pads on. They stand on the bench and they face the fans and they receive that love. That's right. I got you. So yeah, so yeah, cool. that man, cool. for sure, cool. for sure, for sure. Cool. No cap. We should. What you what, what you call it? We should trademark it. Yeah, Anybody I know. Go to the sideline and do that. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, you should. But oh, it been easy. you know what though? Like when I look at where Georgia football is right now, they win it, right? But what else they got with that with it? What you think? Uh, I want to hear yours. Ah, uh, what Georgia got? Georgia got. I don't know. Georgia got us. Wait, type wait, of read, read, read. Hold. Swag. Flashiness. Flashiness. Okay. Y'all got to understand where I'm coming from. I love Coach Smart. I love Coach Smart to death, but he don't like that flashy stuff. We found a balance mm. when we was there of, I used to always make it known. When you make a play on defense, we finna dance. Come on, man. Like, Celebrate. I was dabbing and stuff Celebrate. when that was popping. You see what I'm saying? Like, Celebrate. you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I used to always tell my guys on the team, like, swag. My uncle is a deacon. Oh, he told up in church. So, yeah. he was buying my suits. So, my minds may not be suit and tie this week. Right, right. I may have the velvet, you know what I mean? Wide, wide shoulders with the black turtleneck with the white outline, oh, the red rose, black shelly. You feel me? So if you see that now, I love looking at them now. Like they got swag with they winning, which they attracts, it. what it attracts. Okay. After UGA, let's get to NFL. Talk to me. <sighs> that call, what was that call? Man, dog, like, you're talking about a person that returned to his senior year because I was a uh, CBS top 20 prospect. Uh -huh. um, you're talking about a guy who's a preseason Buckets Award watch list. Okay. Right? And I go undrafted. After I was told, <clears throat> you like a third round grade. I was in Pensacola training for the draft. I popped my hamstring, so I wasn't able to participate in the combine. Right. The only regret, you know, I got through that process is I got invited to the Reese Senior Bowl, uh -huh. but I had just played a SEC schedule, playoffs, championship game, and now a week later, I got the Senior Bowl. I thought I had enough tape. That's a, that's that's a lot. What you just our uh, SEC schedule. The Rose Bowl, overtime, fly four hours to Cali, four hours back. You got five days for the next championship. Now, as soon as that championship and you can play longer than everybody else. So everybody else is ahead of you in your combine training. So right. you gotta jump right in the combine training. Then you gotta leave in the middle of combine training and go to Birmingham to put back on pads, do this senior bowl. Then you gotta leave the senior bowl and come back and do the combine. Then you gotta roll into a season. Your rookie year, your hardest year. Come on. So I ended up going undrafted, man, and uh, I was in Houston. So when I went to Houston, uh -huh. right now, on paper, that was the best team I've ever seen in my life. It was Tyran Matthews, Javion Clowney, J.J. Watt, Whitney Merciless, B. Matt McKinney, Zach Cunningham, D.J. Reader, Jonathan Joseph, Kareem Jackson. Uh, was Foster <laughs> the running back then? It was nah, Foster wasn't there. It was Lamar Miller. I ain't even got Damn. them off the side of the ball. Right. Damn. So... <laughs> If, oh. I, if, 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 if I would have known what I know now, because everybody expected me to go, every team expected me to get drafted. So right. when I was undrafted, my phone rung from everybody. Right. Like, let's get this kid on an undrafted deal. Right. If I would have known what I know now, I would have went to a, a, a team that wasn't so stacked. Yeah, because they had the dogs over there. I just told you our name. I just, yeah, man. Jamie O'Klein, J.J. Watt, and Whitney Merciless is in my room. Not on my team. They in my room. Damn. Okay. Hold on. JJ Watt, Whitney Merciless, JV and Clowney, they in my room. I hear you, bro. Man, bro, you, you ain't get on that field, boy. You crazy. Undrafted. But 
Houston, Texas had a third round grade on me. That's what they told me. But, bro, the crazy part about it, to get there. To get there, tough. To get there. To For get them to still time. know my name. Come on, bro. You know what, bro? I never played. That's special. I never played because I was on practice squad the three years there. And if I was anywhere else on practice squad for three years, I would have felt some type of way about it. But behind them, bro, I was behind JJ Watt. And let me tell you just some quick shit about JJ Watt. So JJ Watt kind of got like that Kobe thing. He don't talk to you. Yeah. He'll walk right by you in the hallway. You and him in the hallway. You walking this way. He walking this way. You a rookie. He will not say nothing to you. Not a word. You don't exist. Damn. You do not exist. He it's it's been some time on the team. He didn't not know. a what's up. Not he a... no. He won't even know your name. Not nah, what's up, Rook? Nothing. By the time I left Houston, what's up, Bell? Oh yeah. Practice. He watching my rep. Okay. This is what you should do right here. JJ Watt, the whole team used to be right here. When JJ Watt finishes rep, he'll go all on the other side, away from where the rest of the team watching, and take a knee. I used to go in after the one, I used to go with the twos. When I used to come off with the twos, everybody over here, and I used to do the same thing. Cause really, I'm doing this like a young dude. I don't like being by the team. After practice, I'll go way over there. Yeah. I used to go take a knee by JJ Watt, away from everybody. What you say about my set? So, so was he over there just observing again, or was he yeah, over there? Yeah, so when you're in that zone at practice, like, so you know the one zone, and then everybody watch. Right. The two zone, everybody watch. I got you. The three zone, out of one, the two's watch. I got you. When J.J. Watt finishes rep, he taking a knee away from everybody. He don't want to hear nothing. He just want to, he, he, he take his knee, he just watch. When I used to finish my rep, instead of going where everybody was on, I used to go down there and take a knee right by him when I got him. When I got comfortable, yeah. when I realized he understood when that. He opened up a little bit, opened up that door a little bit. Cause realized who Bell was. Everybody knew I should have been playing just the politics of the game. Gotcha, my oh, man. And he even peeped that. So once I got that stamp, come on, ready to go. Yeah. I'm ready for whatever this journey finna come. My man. One man. of the greatest of all time, Gold Jacket, done stamped me. And he stamped me by not even stamping me. He stamped me by what? Speaking to me. He stamped me by giving me knowledge. Cause even if he did not, even if he acknowledged your presence. But that's showing his respect anyway. Like, that means he still, like you said, when he was going out taking that knee, he, he watched. Deserved. He seen. He observed. He saw for what sure. he needed to for see. Sure. For sure. Okay. For sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. So, you know, with that football, you know what I'm saying? Um, and this is kind of going to transition to, you know what I'm saying, what we really want to, you know what I'm saying, talk about right. is, you know, my last year in Houston, um, I had the best cap of my life. And, um, mm -hmm. I was finna get called up week four. It was COVID year. I was finna get called up to the 53 man roster. And um, it was our bye week. So we had the bye week. And then after that week, we pre came from Jacksonville. I'll never forget it. Okay. So that week is already made up that Bellamy is gonna start or play this week because we had a COVID outbreak and then somebody broke their arm. We only had like two outside linebackers on, on the roster. This one that year was this was COVID. It's crazy. Year. Man, it's crazy year. Crazy year. Man, do you mean to tell me, man? I'm in bed. I get sick. I go to the hospital. Make a long story short, cause I'm saving the rest of my book. Man, I'm in the hospital for uh, say about forty days. Forty oh, days. Yeah. So I uh, oh, well, hold on. This, now you're telling me some. This is some some secret. Dude, right? Ain't nobody know that. You ain't talked about that. Nah. When I got injured and it was on, and I was on IR, it was just said, you know, Bellamy is getting some drink. Um, I had a staph infection, and uh, it got into my bloodstream, and uh, it almost killed me. So I was in the hospital for about, I think it was thirty-three days. So this is where, this is where, on my platform, where exactly. I like to address dealing with adversity. Exactly. And how did this affect you mentally, oh, knowing nah. that you was about this nah. was your calling? No. Nah. Right? So let me let me give you an example. I got sick on Monday of the bye week. Okay. No, 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 no. 
because I still get the Snapchat memories on my phone. It was Tuesday. I had worked out on the off day. I started going in on the off day and working out because that's what JJ Watt did. Right. So it popped up on my Snapchat of me. I remember the day I was in there on a Tuesday. I lifted. I came home. I woke up Wednesday morning. I was sick. By Friday, I was in the hospital with 36 white blood cells. And so that that multiplies as you get sick, the, your body produces white blood cells. So make a long story short, I was getting called up that week. My agent had already told me they was about to fax over the contract for me to sign up from practice squad to, to the 53. So when I was first checking the hospital, they like, yeah, we have you out tomorrow. I ain't tripping. As long as you just have me out before, so I can go get my spot. This is finally my chance. Sign this. You dig? Day two, you come in there, you ain't going home. Day two, you ain't going home. I'm like, hold on, Man. my boy. It's like Friday. On How the, you feeling? Hold on. It's like Friday on the bye week. I'm like, hold on. I ain't getting better. I got to Tuesday to and get the practice. practice. Right. Go through these reps, man. Make a long story short, man. Jump turned into a whole month. Damn. Turned to a whole month. During that time, um, it was a staph infection, so it was a virus. So I uh, couldn't leave my room. So at the end of the day, uh, I'll wake up, have breakfast brought to me, have my blood drawn, uh, have my wound clean. And I just stay in this bed every day. I was slicking a, like a, a sight ward. All I seen was the same four walls. So, so how, like, for your I cracked. You know, that's what I was about I to cracked. say. I was trying to say that. Oh, I, I cracked. I cracked. So, because you knowing now, I right, when you got to the point to where you don't miss that timeline in your head to where I got to be out to sign this paperwork so I can. You know what I'm saying? I didn't miss that. I, so, w w at what point? I cracked. They used to bring my breakfast in the same time at like 8. They used to roll it in. So one time, I'm laying on the bed, boom. I think it's like, I think I'll never forget. Because my number 17, I think it was like day 17. Man, you roll the thing over in the morning. I got my breakfast. This about day 17. I'm doing the same thing for 17 days straight. Same routine, same bed, same four walls. Can't leave. Dang. I used to work out. I used to grab my walker and walk in the hallway and do do over my head. Oh, that's when that that head. Yeah. That's yeah. how I used to work out. I got you. Cause I couldn't. So no, no. Oh, they brought their breakfast out. I looked at the clock. It was like eight thirty. I said, "Whoa, I finished being here another twelve hours. Cause I'm gonna sleep." The, the meds that they had me on, I had a step up above morphine. It was like diet something. It's, it's it's a level of morphine, so it knocked me out by eight thirty. I said, "Damn, I'm finna be here for another twelve hours." Damn, I feel Shit. Oh man, that was the one. Spaz. Look, God, what you doing to me? What you doing to me? Why are you doing this 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 to me? Boom, boom, punching. Pop, pop, pop. Still got stuff in my arms from that little IV. I'm punching. See, it's just coming out. I was punching. Thanks, man. I tell you what, though, after all the dust settled, shit, I apologize for questioning God. I appreciate that one, because the thing about it, yep. I ain't even, you know I already saying? know. It, 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 come it, on it, now. It's touching me, you feel yeah, me? Yeah, you already it's, know. It's one of those things, man. It's like I was right there. I was right there. Yeah. But, you know, like I was right said, there. I was right there. Reason, my, my agent said they had faxed it over. They faxed it over, like, from... Prep squad 53. But I do want to say though, like, it's all about how you look at life. There you go. Right. They say what made Michael Jordan so great is he was optimistic. Even in his father passed, you know. Even in his father passed, he was optimistic. So I'm going through this in the hospital. And I, the reason why I apologize for questioning God is because I had to go through three surgeries and in, in, um, in, in that 30 days. At, at, at three time. surgeries. Three surgeries. And every time I had a surgery, I had to sign a waiver of this may not happen. You may lose this. Or you may lose this. Oh, y'all hear that? Every time. So the first surgery is you may lose this. You may not this. 
It may not this after every surgery. You sound. I had to sign it because okay, I gotta get better, and I gotta need surgery. But when it get to where I was at, the doctor gonna give you a form and say you may lose this when you when you open your eyes from your anesthesia. This you may hello. Dang. You gotta sign it though, or what you wanna do? Cause I was deathly sick. Okay. Every time I came out, I was three for three. On the positive side, okay. So how I looked at it, I can't be like, "Dad, damn God, dang yeah. God," and then he give me three for three, and I want to pray him. So That's I had a great spin. Facts. That's a great spin. Facts. That's a Vegas. I go to Vegas with that one. Come on. Yeah, that's a great spin. So after that, bro, I, I mean, I appreciate that. That, that that's deep. That book. Mm -hmm. Let me know when that. How, how, talk to the people when that book. Oh yeah, out. man. Oh yeah, man. You know that's, that book. You know, um, so. I want to do the most organic book possible. Okay. I know it's a call on my life, so I've been keeping a journal for the last five years. Okay. And I write. Oh, you write, man? I write. You, you, yeah? Come on, I write. Oh, I was, my God. I was oh, getting, my God. Okay. I was, I, was getting, I was getting 90s on my paper at Georgia. Write them for myself. I you get what I'm saying? To go in. Like, like, I don't write nothing. Real deal. So... Uh, when I drop my book, it's going to be like one of the most vulnerable books because I'm literally just turning my diary into a, a book. I guess. Because I ain't finna sit up and say, okay, my name is that and I have somebody type for me. I'm literally turning over somebody, like when it's time for the story to be told how I want to tell it, I'm turning over three notebooks of me that I've been documenting and writing when I was in the hospital, when I was a free Everything agent. Everything you was going through. I just wrote it down that's the way I stay sane. You gotta get it out your head, so I get it on paper. So whenever I get this book, it ain't gonna be I'm sitting on the desk and somebody typing it. Nah, it's gonna be this my diary, like Anne Frank low key. This my diary. So you know what? I to speak on that part, I think um writing in the diary or taking that stuff down, is that a part is that a part of mental, like mentally helping you? Uh cause me. I take mine out, like when, if I'm bothering or something, I need to do something, get something off, I'm, I'm gonna hit the gym. Right. So I can, you right. know what I'm saying? Right. So right. writing works for you? So let me ask you a question. <clears throat> Whenever you're going through whatever you're going through, because we all going through something, and you hit the gym, do your most sensitive thoughts come out? I get it off, bro. Cause you I'm, know, you yeah. get it off through steam and energy. Yeah, yeah. But your most sensitive, deepest thought that you never told nobody, you don't get it out. Nah. When you write down how you really feeling, you get your deepest, darkest secret I'm gonna tell on you, paper. I'm going to tell you something real quick. I ain't get this enough on my last one. Um, I think it was two years ago, three years ago, Thanksgiving morning, 6 a.m. I got a phone call, 6 a.m., cousin told me that it's Thanksgiving morning my nephew's in another room I get a phone call saying that my sister had just mm. died in a car wreck Thanksgiving morning bro. Mm. Um, um, what I did bro I ain't gonna cry I'm gonna fuck it up So when that, when he told me that, I, all I could do was pause, right? And then my nephew, whose mother was, he knocked on my door. Mm. So I'm like, oh. somebody already called him, test that yeah, too. And he said, oh, I ain't even want to open my door. He opened the door, bro. I, I fell in his arm. Mm -hmm. Crying like a baby. Right. Um, guess what I did though? I, I couldn't do nothing. But I went my back when I worked out. For sure. I ain't know what to do. For sure, you know, you know. I worked out for like an hour. Right. He was so strong. Shit. He worked out a little bit with me, and he drove two hours to see the family. I couldn't do. It. Mm. I had to sit there and just lock the door. Like he cried. I couldn't do it. And I sat out for two days. Right.
I said my lawyer, got I went to work. I, I went to my back room and I, I just worked, worked out. Worked out. Worked so out. So I don't know what else to yeah, do. Yeah, for sure. You feel for me? sure. Um, for sure. But so uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's another thing also, like I write a lot, uh huh. Then I do work out a lot. Right. Um and that's what keeps me sane. Right. So I, I definitely I know hear you what you're coming from. And then I know you got some more stuff going on outside of um the sports life. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, I always want to feel like, you know what I'm saying? Um, we ain't going to stay trapped in No, nah, we ain't going to stay gonna trapped keep, in it. We're going to keep going. You know what I'm saying? Out. Like, look, and, uh, then, this is what I really want to say, too. Like, a lot of athletes, man, like, I've taken my name, bro, and it, it's a name, but then you got one love. You got, and that's associated with 17. Mm -hmm. That's my brand, right? Mm -hmm. So just because I'm not in the NFL or I'm a free agent, you know, I see a lot of guys, like, when they get cut from a team, they just disappear from Instagram. Oh. They wipe all their stuff. Ah. So you mean to tell me just because one brand don't like you, you gonna shut down your whole brand? Uh, not even That don't make sense. That don't even make sense. So yeah, man, I'm, I'm like I said, I got the book going. Um, and I always felt like my platform was much bigger than sports. You know, I got a challenge with myself is I want to make a million off my brain, right. not just my body. Come on, man. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm 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 uh fashion line, uh the book, the fashion line. Well, the swag always been you, 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 The swag always been there and it's always been different. So, you know what I'm saying? I want to give people more of that organic style. Um, you know, I want to get into the acting and you know, to be completely honest, I've had um, you know, opportunities to go do different things for roles, but it's a certain role I want to go for. It. Right, right. Now, now don't, I mean, just after that, you the other league you got called to. Oh, yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, stop it. Don't get me kidding. twisted. Don't I, get, hold on. I know, on, I know on, you still on, got on, that on, thing. Hold on, now. hold on, hold on. I know you still. Hold on, hold on. I just seen this. Hold on, I just hold on. seen this, now. Don't get it twisted. I told you I didn't play in Houston because Come of on, politics. Man. I know So, so, you. so, so, so. Dang, dang. I had to take the route was, you know what? If I'm 35 years old and I'm looking back at my career, I don't want it to be like my agent make a call or I'm blaming my agent. If you got, if the, if I want to show that I'm ready for the NFL, I got to go put it on tape. So I'm going to do the spring leagues. You feel yeah, me? I'm going to do yeah. the XFL. I'm going to do USFL. I saw that. I'm going to be all pro in both of them. Come on, bro. I'm going to have goddamn, you know what I'm saying, like 19 sacks in 20 games. All the tape. That's what I'm going to do. You see what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. So that's still the main thing. You got to keep the main thing the main thing. Come but, on, um, yeah, man, you got to take it. You got to your own hand. I see you see what I'm saying? Ain't nothing changed. Ain't nothing changed. Ain't nothing changed. Still came off the edge. Ain't nothing changed. Changed. Ain't changed. Ain't nothing changed. Dog. I seen what JJ seen. Facts. Facts. Put him, I seen Facts. it. Facts. Seen what nah, JJ nah, seen, that bro. That my dog. That that my that dog. That man, I pre like I said, I appreciate you for coming, man. I appreciate you taking time with my kids. I want you to, uh, like I say, my youth. It's my big boy growing me right now. And I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep feeding it to them. I want them to hear everything they need to hear, coming from a professional. Um, I had the last words. What well, could you tell my kids, man? Tell my, my especially my. This, the, this, kids, the, this. Man. If I give you a last word, uh, become obsessed with whatever you do. You know, become obsessed with whatever you do. Uh, you know, I, I read a lot of the Kobe Bryant books. Uh, you know, come. Obsessed with whatever you do. Whatever you want, you gotta become obsessed with it. And I always like to call myself like the Vincent Van Gogh. If you know Vincent Van Gogh, you know he was a special painter. He was a beautiful painter. He became so obsessed with his work that he cut his own ear off. Dang. You don't have to go that extreme, but that's the obsession you need in your craft to be in the 1% of the world. Mm. So that's the last word, man, is obsession. Okay. My oh, man, I appreciate you, Bill. Next one. The next one. I got one more, right? Oh, for sure. I got one for more. Sure. All I need yeah, is one man. more, Bill. Yeah, one more. Come on, man. Yeah, one more. You got Come one more. Come on, man. Uh, Let's get that pick real quick. Let me get my B once back.